Bonafide Hustler here, and today we're actually gonna go to the booth. What's going on guys and gals? Chris the Bonafide Hustler, and we are gonna go to my antique booth today. We're gonna go check it out. We're gonna do a booth drop, so you guys are gonna come along with me. It should be a lot of fun. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at The Bonafide Hustler. Yeah, the brand new guide, Antique Booths to Bucks, is out, go check it out. But today, and we'll talk about that guide later, but today we're gonna go to the booth and you see right here, this is called a booth tag. So I have to fill this stuff up. We have some cool inventory I'm gonna show you here in a second that's gonna to go to the booth, about eight to 10 items. Um, but yeah, it's as simple as this. We're not taking any pictures. We're not listing this thing on eBay. We're not dealing with any customers. We're not gonna deal with any kind of returns or potential returns. It's as simple as this tag right here. I'm gonna be putting a product code to it. I'm gonna put it on my inventory sheet, what I paid for these items, and essentially that's it. We're gonna be doing the drop today. We're gonna to go to the booth and have a lot of fun. We're gonna actually see how I merchandise my booth. It might be in some disarray when we get there. We'll see. So here are some of the items that I'm dropping off today. And actually one of these items is kind of interesting. This actually already was in the booth. Someone bought it off eBay. I brought it home and that person didn't pay me. But anyway, that's a Swandry hoodie. It's good enough to put in the booth. It's got a good Mackinac type look to it. But here's some of the other items that are going in the booth today. You know, picked up this stuff for dirt cheap. This one probably $1 at a garage sale. Um, I kept it in my house for a little bit and then we got this other table that is just way smaller. It doesn't fit on there. So I'm gonna put this in the booth for right around 25 to 35 bucks. It's kind of like a mini runner kind of thing. Um, we have an orange crush crate right there. That could probably be in the booth for around 50 to 75. We have a purse from Thrifty Z right here. And this is a crocodile purse. She paid eight bucks for it. And I think we're gonna put it in the booth between one and 150. Um, we also have this medium kind of satchel bag that she found when she was on vacation. Um, she paid $8 for this thing. And we're probably gonna put this one in the booth for $100 because it's just got that perfect look to it. And people love bags like this. Now we have a kind of run of the mill pair of boots here. These are Ariats, but usually we don't pop on Ariats, but this one right here has some good tooling to it. And we have good tooling, some decent embroidery. Um, really at this point, she paid 20 for these boots and I do think that she could get about 80 to 100 in the booth for that. And then we have four pearl snap shirts and it's kind of cool and I want to show you on this video these, these four pearl snap shirts because we're dealing with four different brands and if you're going to, you know, resell pearl snap shirts at your booth, for example, if you have a booth or you're maybe interested in, you know, making a booth happen, then, you know, pearl snap shirts, at least here in Austin, Texas, do very well. So here's some good brands you want to look out for. Eli Cattleman. Roper, not a bad one, a little bit more current day Roper, but we're still dealing with pearl snaps, which is cool. We have a Panhandle Rough Stock, right? This was actually out of my personal collection. I just don't actually use this thing anymore. So anyway, that's going in the booth right there. And then we have a Wrangler, which is nice, right? A long tail Wrangler, nice pearl snap shirt. Um, so, you know, when I go to garage sales, I pick up these things for between like one and three bucks. And in the booth, you know, something like this, this Eli Cattleman will be about you know, it'll net me about 24, this one about 24, this one probably 24, 27, and then this one probably 27 right here. So these are the items that are going to the booth right now. And we're gonna to go to the booth here in one second. I'm gonna take this tag right now, and I'm gonna be, I already have everything on the inventory sheet. Now I gotta put tags to everything, um, and that takes two seconds. And then we'll go to the booth and check it out um, and see, we're gonna do a couple things, right? First is gonna be at the booth drop, and the second thing is we're gonna, shift around 20 items. Every time I go to the booth, I try to shift around 20 items because sometimes in the booth, things will end up in corners or in the dark depths of you know, a black hole, basically. And so we wanna make sure that we rotate items and, um, and that we give it our best shot because you know it's upcoming weekend today. As of this, as of this filming right here, this is Friday, um, and you know the weekend's coming up. We wanna make sure that we give it the best shot. And this is something that I kinda of do before the weekends come around. I try to give the booth the best shot to make some money. But yeah, there's only, like by the time you see this video, this is the last day of that intro sale for Booths to Bucks. Go check it out. This will teach you the entire kind of like how to find an antique mall, how to find the perfect booth, how to outfit the booth, how to manage the booth. 50 items that you should be looking for. It's a great guide. It's on a severe, severe, like amazing price for launch week discount. Go check it out. After that, it'll just be regular price, even if you're, you know, wanting to check out antique booths or see if it's for you. And then the link will still be down below and you can go check it out. All right, so time to tag this stuff and uh, let's go to the booth. All right, so before we're gonna make it to the booth, obviously, in good hustler fashion, right? We're at a thrift store. And uh, Drifty Z has found this vase right here that she's gonna get for eight bucks. And we're gonna be targeting around the 65, like 75 mark for it. But there it is right there. And uh, 
yeah we're gonna put that in the booth today we're gonna check it out all right we bought it and this thing is basically a recycled glass like yellow gold brush like vase type thing so we're gonna put this in the booth for 65 to 75 bucks but yeah this thing was eight bucks around 849 out the door something like that pretty interesting find and this is going in the booth today with a piece of tape and a tag that's gonna be like right here somewhere we're at another goodwill and we are gonna pop on this kind of cool it's kind of like a mesh between contemporary mcm it's a chair it's a cb2 chair and it is 10 bucks so we're gonna get into this and put it in the booth for like one to 125. we found these two-tone awesome tony llama boots and this is exactly what you want to be putting in a booth here in austin texas for sure great great embroidery look at that embroidery it's incredible but you always have to look at the other boot and we have some complete damage here so this is gonna be a pass but uh this is the kind of boots that do really well in the booth for like one to 150 easily. These boots here are usually about 20 bucks. So yeah, there you go right there. So we're gonna pass on these, but this is the perfect thing to buy for a vintage antique booth right here. So we're leaving that thrift store right there, that Goodwill and Thrifty Z, my girlfriend, basically bought both of these. So this one was 10 bucks and the other reversible jacket, which is right here. Uh, we paid 26 for everything out the door. And ordinarily, when we go to thrift stores, we're buying stuff for eBay, obviously. We're buying things to flip locally. But this just happens to be a day where we're finding more things for the booth. It wasn't really set up to be that way. We're thrifting. We're just thrifting, you know? And we're going to thrift after the booth, too. I'm sure we're going to find some eBay stuff. But just, it's pretty good stuff to put in the booth, so why not? Got to make room for this in the Cheddar Mobile. So with a simple Google image search, Thrifty Z was able to figure out that that chair right there is uh it's kind of it's kind of like a mesh between mcm and contemporary you know it's got the gold look everyone loves that gold look it's as popular as the mirror dresser look for example um so that right there was a uh, 10 or 11 bucks with a google simple google search right um that's a cb2 accent chair and that thing is 225 to 250 new so what we're, our plan on this one is to list it we're going to take pictures of it in the parking lot at the antique mall and we're going to put it in the antique mall for X amount of money. It probably will sell this weekend. We'll also have pictures to where we can list it locally should we choose to do that. We just pulled up to the antique mall. We're outside of it and we're getting the tags ready. They're sitting right here on my little dash and I got a pen and it's as simple as this. Um, Z is gonna rattle me off some inventory numbers and she's basically putting this into the sheet and that way we know when we see things sell at evening time, we'll know what it was, you know. That way, if it happens to be cross-listed somewhere else, then we just pull it from that other place and vice versa. Okay, so we got three tags, three things to drop off, plus those other things, and then let's get in the booth and I can show you around the booth a little bit. All right, so Thrifty Z is getting tape. She's walking down, you can see it. And we're sitting here in the Cheddar Cove. That's what I think I'm gonna actually name this place. I'm gonna get like a, a name up here. Um, so yeah, um, we just walked in and it's actually in really good shape. It's not um, completely blown to pieces. Um, you know, I got a pair of boots here that doesn't look like our pair of boots. So this is gonna go to the front and uh, it's actually a really good deal on these things. Wow, 30 bucks. These look like Lucases. They are Lucases. I mean, some booth is selling Lucases for 30 bucks. Gosh. Anyway, that's gonna go to the actual uh, front. You know, so sometimes you find straggler items in your booth. But let me kind of take you through a little bit and you can see a little bit of my merchandising kind of strategy. I see some things are already in place. I'm looking right here and I see this thing like this is a vest and this is the jacket wall and the vest part is down here somewhere. So that's obviously misplaced, but we have, you know, antlers in a box right here, right? It's kind of cool because this is a neat little box as well. Got all the antlers in there. I think the next move that we're going to be doing soon is we're going to be making this boot wall all the way to the bottom we're going to take out this mcm chair right here and make boot wall all the way you know from the floor to the ceiling which means these boots are going to go over there on the top we have delicates things that you know kids could be touching and we don't want them to be smashing any of these things and plus you know the money in these double mantle lanterns a lot of the times comes from yes the patina and you know if it's undented up but also the globe and if that's cracked kind of worthless to be honest so um, let's go around the booth right here. And there are booths all over my, you know, antique mall. Obviously, I'm surrounded by booths. Um, this is the jacket wall right here. And in the month of December, this was one huge piece of clothing. Or should I say, every piece of clothing was on this one rack. And it was really hard to get to some of the things. So 
what we decided to do in December, and we spent about two to three hours here in the booth, is we made a second rack right here, which is cool. So now Pearl Snap Shirts will be in this section, and we got to like touch it up a little bit, and that's just part of, you know, when you visit a booth, you have to touch it up. We have t-shirts, and then we have the vests, Southwestern vests, you know, Marlboro Man style vests, you know, shirts like this go over in that section. So we're gonna adjust those things. So as we get more into the booth, you can kind of see what I was talking about earlier. I'm gonna make this an entire booth wall probably in the month of January, which we're in the month of January, but towards the tail end, I'm gonna get all this right, which means I have to make sure that I get the, the shelving heights right, because some of these boots are super tall and they just don't fit in some of these things right here. Oh my God, you have it on. Oh, it's the lady that bought the Doc Martens. <laughs> Look at that. And she actually works here. Awesome. <laughs> oh my goodness, no, I was saying, I was like, that's Look at so that. cool that they, they fit you. And... Yeah, I bought the steel tone ones too. Yeah. yeah, she bought both the Doc Martens from our booths. <laughs> How rare are those things? They're pretty rare, right? Yeah, the made in England. Made, made in, in England ones. Yeah. Whoops. I'm gonna fall. Sorry. <laughs> Look how cool those things are. Yeah, if wow. they were my size, I probably would have kept them. All right, that was a really interesting kind of story. So let me take you through some more of the booth. We have some cassettes and everything. Try to keep a cassette section here. And some of the loose ones that I can't really figure out where we're gonna have to figure this out or just take them home. But uh, you know, there was a point where <laughs> they were out to here about three weeks ago. So we've sold that many cassettes. Obviously there's VHS tapes in here. We have a little section for both of those things. We have a Stein section, which is kind of cool. And then we have like a little fishing section, which is nice. These things sell really well in the booth. So it takes a little bit of a footprint, but you know, these things are awesome. Little Tiffany floor lamp kind of style floor lamps. Um, this Stein right here, for example, you might be wondering like, why is it in there? Well, it's a little taller than the other ones, so it couldn't fit. And then my only kind of thing that you know, here's the booth right here. Pegboard's absolutely necessary and we have some holes. So this is definitely gonna be a comeback kind of situation to figure out exactly how we're gonna get the rest of these letters kind of up there um, because it's tough to get up there. And so we have to kind of figure out, does that mean we make a little alleyway through here so people can get to them? It's, uh, you know, it's for another day. Um, but here's the section right here where we have glass panels, right? Here's a glass panel. There's a glass panel, this one's super cool. Um, and then we have actual stained glass windows or hanging pieces, right? So, and then we actually have actual windows right here. And then we have our ornate mirrors of all sorts, as you can see. Uh, some little Bruyana right here, some beef eater kind of things. We have a nice piece of open pegboard here to put some bags, which is cool. And we have bags all over the place, as you can see. Um, and then we have just, uh, you know, another place for like a Tiffany kind of stained glass piece right here, but we just didn't want to put it on the floor because obviously, you know, kids come through and start messing with things. This is the reason why things like this are up here and that is up there. Those are toys. You want to kind of go high with them. And here's something interesting about the, something that has to be high. Look at this thing. So we've spent, uh, I think 20 at a garage sale for this really interesting, obscure kind of, uh, art piece it's on a nice piece of like live edge cookie cutter wood kind of thing but it's so sharp so yeah i can't put this on the floor someone will absolutely get stabbed by it so i had to go to the very top and then here's the jacket kind of section right here we're going to touch it up a little bit obviously we're going to take this out we're going to take this anything that looks like a sweater we're going to roll it towards the sweater section which is a little bit more this way and then we have our suede and leathers through here and then some of our really snazzy windbreakers end up in this section, but then we don't have many of them because they sell. As discussed earlier, we have a vest section down here, then it goes into t-shirts and then pearl snap shirts. So, um, you know, everything comes down to optimizing and it's always, uh, how do I say it? It's always kind of a fun task to curate a different experience. So some months I might come in here for just like an hour at a time, um, like combined total. And then some months I come from for like three hours, you know, combined total but it's not a whole lot. And as you can tell, you can sell some really cool things that would just be impossible to sell on eBay, like this thing right here, that thing right there. Um, these things just with shipping would eat you alive on profit. You just would not be able to make any money on it, right? Um, things like this, for example, you know, things like this, you ship it off, it'll probably break. Hey, look, there's a cassette in here. Please be Brooks and Dunn. It is Brooks and Dunn. That means I found the matching one, yes. So we can put this one back together. Looks like someone messed it up. And then these are um, done by sticker tag, by the way, right? So that goes right there. Everything else kind of has a tag. You can see how easy it is. We just drop things off and it is uh, pretty amazing. We have all kinds of wacky things that we found from garage sales. Like I think this was like five or 10 bucks at a garage sale right here. Um, and then we have motorcycle bags, much larger letters have to be at the bottom, especially letters that are like this, a G, you know? 
because it would roll off the top if I put it up there somewhere. So um, we're always constantly thinking about things like that when we're merchandising the booth, thinking about, you know, can the thing fall off? Is it gonna get damaged? Um, and then we have a section over here that has cool stuff too. Um, you can try on boots, whatever. It's a Dooney purse, we have a, kind of a, a blown piece right here, blown glass piece, which is super nice. I'm surprised this is still here, to be honest with you. This should be going pretty soon. That's a really nice piece. So one of the things we're gonna take care of today is we're gonna re-merchandise 20 different things. Obviously, we're gonna tidy it up real quick and we should be out of here in about 10 minutes. Um, and yeah, that's the goal. Check out this crazy stuff. But like, I paid, I think, five or 10 bucks at a garage sale for this. And this is like a military kind of um, case, right? I think it's a Zero Halliburton, before it was Zero Halliburton, so this is sitting here. You might be thinking, that's kind of weird, like why would anyone buy that? Well, look, I mean, it's kind of like the exact same height as just say an accent chair. So this could be an accent piece in someone's house, for example. Tons of character, great patina, um, really neat. And on top of that, we have cool hats, more mirrors in the back. Um, but I think our next thing that we're gonna experiment with is getting this section completely cleaned out to where boot wall, top to bottom, that way people can walk right up, try boots on and buy them. So the booth is a lot of fun. Obviously to get a booth looking like this, it takes some visits in the initial part. Quite honestly, you don't know the potential of a booth till like sometimes three or five years down the road when you really realize, you know, what can you do and what can't you do? How high can you go? Um, so a lot of these uh, kind of questions and these tips are in the new guide. Um, and it's really to, the guy that's made to get you revenue pumping quick, <laughs> you know, um, because it's important. You know, there's rent involved, there's commissions involved, um, and making money is really important. Now, some of the things that we were dropping off today, right? These these pro snap shirts. This is a perfect example of like bread and butter type items that make rent happen, right? And the big jumps, for example, the fun stuff happens from the stools and big mirrors and you know the case down here, that awesome MCM chair, panels over here, like all the bigger jumps occur with these like hundred dollar items like the bags up there things like that so bread and butter items are really important whether it be pearl snap shirts or belt buckles or boots or tapes or vhs tapes for me those are good bread and butter type of items they help get to the rent pretty quickly if you have any questions put them down below but i'm going to tidy up the booth real quick get it looking back to normal before the weekend and then uh yeah should be pretty cool so we're back in the car and we got that booth looking super snazzy for the weekend and since it's gonna be a cold weekend I'm pretty sure we're gonna have a lot of people coming through we did um, learn that thrifty Z sold a cool item today in the booth um, someone walking around the mall bought it and they paid a hundred we'll probably get 87 out of it 88 something what, what sold a, it was like a cape looking thing a suede a leather cape. suede cape yeah. leather suede cape how much you buy for only like 10 bucks eight bucks 10 bucks, eight bucks, and I know we're gonna see it on the check tonight for 88, so pretty cool. So that definitely sold today. There might be another item that sold because I think 50Z got word that another item had sold. Um, we're halfway through the day. And so I'm gonna get this thing out to you guys. But yeah, check it out. If this sounds like something you wanna check out a little bit more, do your due diligence, buy antique booths to bucks. Um, basically today is the last day of the intro uh, sale price. So you can catch it as the first link down below. And I think it'll really paint a picture of, you know, how fun this thing is. The fact that you're not dealing with any customers, you're tagging items, um, no returns, right? Um, and you kind of come and go as you please. So it's a lot of fun and uh, we can't wait to see what else has sold on the thing tonight on the list. That's pretty much the video and we'll see you on the next Bonafide Hustler video. Take it easy, goodbye.